Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today I'll be reviewing the Abconcore Kronos 510S Mid-Tower Gaming PC case. Abconcore is positioning this case in the mid to premium range for gaming PC builds. The case comes in at around $100 to $110 US. I'll have links to the case and accessories in the description below, so check that out. Visually speaking, the case checks the box for nice tempered glass, an included RGB fan that is addressable, and a unique front frame pattern that also catches the eye with addressable RGB lighting effects. The C510S will support up to standard sized ATX motherboards, and it will actually have plenty of room to spare, which I really do appreciate because it helps make the build process that much easier. The C510S has support for up to a 168 millimeter tall air cooler. You should be able to fit all of the popular dual tower coolers in this case, which is nice. In terms of water cooling, the case is compatible with a front and a top 240 millimeter mount rad. And you do have the option for a 120 or 140 millimeter rad on the rear. There's plenty of space inside the case for components, as I had mentioned earlier. It supports up to a 390 millimeter long graphics card. I was able to fit my massive Gigabyte Aorus 1080 Ti with room to spare. There are multiple cable management pass-throughs, which is quite important when it comes to not only the look of your gaming build, but the overall airflow and the case's ability to cool the components. While solid state drives clearly offer better performance, I just am not able to give up my two, three, or four terabyte hard drives for game storage and file storage. There are three dedicated SSD mount locations and there are two bays that are toolless that support either a three and a half inch hard drive or two and a half inch SSDs. In terms of dust filtration, I was happy to see the magnetic removable top filter as well as filters for the bottom power supply chamber and the storage component chamber. These filters aren't magnetic, but they are a fine mesh and it is easily removed, so you can clean it pretty easily to keep up on case maintenance. The front fan mounts do not have a filter, but the open space is somewhat limited due to the square patterning of the front panel design. There is a bottom opening in the front panel, but it isn't that large. So once in a while, you'll just want to keep an eye on the dust buildup and vacuum that out. Abcon Core was a relatively unfamiliar brand to me before they had reached out to take a look at this case. Since I hadn't worked with them before, I was really curious about the build quality. After tearing the case down and taking a look at each of the panels and the glass, I was pleasantly surprised. The case was overall very good quality. After I had removed all of the panels, I wanted to see how rigid or flexible the case was. The case was still relatively firm while being lightweight, which I like to see. I didn't find any sharp edges. All of the cable management cutouts were done pretty well. The paint job was great quality. There were no blemishes or bad spots anywhere on any of the painted surfaces that I could see, and there weren't any on the plastic panels either. The tempered glass side panel was not on a swinging hinge, but it was on standoffs with rubber mounts. Other than my smudged fingerprints, it was a great quality piece and it was pretty easy to remove and install. As I said before, the overall build quality of this case was pretty high and I was happy with it. The build experience in the case proved to be pretty easy and snagless, kind of like I thought it would be. I'm picky with the included motherboard screws and the standoffs. I've had issues in the past with certain cases. There were definitely no issues here. Everything went in pretty easy. There was tons of room for mounting the motherboard and everything inside of the case. I only had one minor fitment issue and that was kind of my fault. I tried to cram a massively oversized EVGA 1000 watt power supply into the power supply shroud. This isn't really so much of a complaint as just something to note if you're gonna use a very large power supply like that, it will be a little bit of a tight fit down there. That's not something I really see a typical customer installing. I was mostly doing this for the test system. So it's just something to note when you're purchasing your power supply. As you can see, I was able to hide most of the cabling well with the PSU shroud and all of the cable routing. I didn't opt for water cooling in this build, but as I said before, there's plenty of space. You can do at least two 240 millimeter rads. The case does come with one included ARGB fan that I had mentioned earlier. 
According to Abcon Core, the fan has a max speed of 1300 RPM and pushes out a max of 34 CFM. The fan does come with vibration dampening material on the four mounting points. This helps keep it quiet even when it's spinning at full speed. During testing, I ran the fan at full speed and it was basically silent operation. I was pretty happy with that. I found the one included fan to be okay with helping the overall system cooling, but I'm assuming this probably isn't going to be enough to keep up in a situation where either the graphics card or the processor had low end coolers or heat sinks. I ran the first set of tests with my Ryzen 1600 AE at stock speeds with the stock cooler. I was right around the 74 to 77 degrees Celsius temperature range during a 3D Mark time spy run. This is roughly where I would expect the temperature to be, but slightly on the higher side since the ambient temperature in the room was about 20C at time of testing. After switching to a Scythe Mugen 5, I saw a temperature reduction of about 10 to 15C down into the 60C range. I've reviewed this cooler in the past. You can check the card at the top for a link to that video. So depending on the CPU cooler, the case is likely going to see a benefit from having one or two additional front mounted intake fans, especially if you end up buying a graphics card that tosses out a lot of heat. The SP120 Spectrum fan kits that Abcon Core sells would probably be something I'd recommend, if not just any extra fan for the front intake. This is gonna allow you to get maximum cooling performance out of this case, which should translate into better performance overall. Abcon Core does sell two fan packages. Both come with a hub and a remote for the addressable RGB configuration. You can either buy it in a three or a five pack for this case. I'll have links to the fan kits in the description below, so definitely check that out. Overall, at the current price of $110 US, I like this case. I think the build quality is definitely where it needs to be for this price range. I like that it includes an addressable RGB fan along with the front RGB lighting element that is also addressable. The only real comment I have about this case is that it's a little light on the included fans. If you're interested in buying this case, I would probably pick up one or two additional fans, if not the three pack from Abcon Core, and mount them in the front of the case to get the maximum cooling effect. I'm definitely curious to know what your feedback is about this case. Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this review, hit that thumbs up button. If you're interested in PC and server builds or component reviews, get subscribed to the channel. You can click that bell icon under the video to get email updates when new videos land on the channel too. You can follow me on Twitter at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or check out the website, samstechstuff.com.